Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BV3D channel we're going to look at a technique to get multiple colors on the first layer of a 3D printed model using a single extruder 3D printer. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BV3D. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about cool 3D printer upgrades, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to look at a technique to get multiple colors on the first layer of a 3D printed model with a single extruder 3D printer. This is a slightly more advanced version of the video where I showed how to print a multicolor or multi-material 3D model by using Prusa Slicer to select layers to do filament swaps. Now just to quickly recap, the filament swap technique is where you pause the printer at a certain layer height, unload the current filament, load new filament, and resume printing with that new filament. The technique is very useful for getting multiple colors into a printed model, for example, adding a waterline to a 3D Benchy, or 3D printing a sign, where you have text that's a few layers taller than the background color of the sign, so you can swap filament after the background is done printing, and then print the text part in a different color. But the drawback is that those colors are all on different layers. What if you wanted to have two or more colors on the same layer of a 3D printed sign? Well, you can do that too, and I'll show you how to get two colors on the first layer of a model, which should leave you with either a nice smooth surface or a nice textured surface, depending on the build surface of your printer. The trick is that you actually design the thing to print as two separate models, one for the text and one for the rest of the sign, and you'll print the text model first, and then when it's done, you'll swap the filament and print the second model, which is the rest of the sign. Now, I need to point out that this method is probably very incompatible with an automatic bed leveling system if it probes the bed prior to every print job. Because when you start the second print job, the first print job is still on the bed. So if you have a way to tell your printer to probe the bed before the first print job, save the mesh data, and reuse that mesh without probing when you start the second print, then you can probably pull this off. I'm like 93% certain that this can be done, but I don't know how to do it. Okay, so there are two parts to this process. The first part is designing the models, and we'll do this in Tinkercad because it's super easy for this sort of thing. The second part is how to actually print the two models one on top of the other. And we'll do this in Prusa Slicer, but the concept should work on other slicers as well. There are a few settings that we'll need to adjust, but apart from that, it works just like printing two models one right after the other. So let's get right on into Tinkercad. So instead of a big sign, I want to make a little business card sized thing. To do this, we'll need two things from Tinkercad's basic shapes panel. First, we need a box, which we'll resize to be our card. So drag a box out onto the work plane. The second thing is text. So scroll through the basic shapes panel, locate the text object, and drag that out onto the work plane too. Earlier, I measured a business card and it's about 90 millimeters by 50 millimeters. So let's set the width of the box to 90 millimeters and the length to 50 millimeters. And since this is gonna be like a card, let's set it to one millimeter tall. Now I don't wanna do anything fancy with the text, but maybe what I will do is make it say the BV3D channel. Now that looks too wide. I think I'll put each word in its own text object, so I'll duplicate this and change them. And let's switch to a top-down view and also turn off perspective view, so Tinkercad isn't trying to make the text look like it's getting smaller off in the distance. Now I can rearrange these text objects and scale them a little bit to get the look that I want. And that looks okay. So I'll draw a selection box around them and click the group icon. And then I can scale it or move it around as if it were a single object. Now I'm pretty happy with the text, but I want to make sure that it fits when it's centered within the card. So I'll draw a selection around the text and the card, and then click the Align icon and align these on their center points. And it looks pretty good. So now we need to make sure that the text is exactly 0.2 millimeters tall. Why? Because it's only going to be one layer thick when we print it. But if you look at the text, it's got all different heights because it got dragged around and scaled and stuff. So let's move it off the card for now. Now we need to get a hole type box and drag that onto the work plane over the text. We're not concerned with the dimensions of the hole type box apart from making sure that it's large enough to completely cover the text. 
So we can just grab one of its corner handles and drag it out until it's big enough. The one dimension that we're really concerned about is the Z dimension. And since we want the text to be 0.2 millimeters thick, we need to raise that whole type box up that high. So grab the pointy cone handle of the box and drag it up just a little bit. Then you can tab into the how far is it above the work plane field and type in 0.2 and press return. Now drag a selection that touches that whole type box and the text and group them together. And that gets us some nice flat text. Okay, now we need to flip the text so that it's mirror imaged because it's going to print first and then the rest of the card is going to print over the top of it. And when we finally take it off the printer, we're going to have to flip it over to look at it. And if we don't mirror image the text, it's going to be backwards when we take it off the printer. So make sure that the text is selected and then click the flip icon and flip it horizontally so that the text is mirrored. Okay, now for some more fun. We have the text and we have the card. But we need to cut the text shape out of the card because if we don't, well, when we print this, we're going to print the text first and then the card. And if we don't cut the shape of the text out of the card, the printer is going to try putting filament on the bed where filament already is. Spoiler alert, when you do this, it looks awful. So by cutting out the shape of the text, we ensure that when the card part prints, it prints around the text on the first layer. So duplicate the text. Then drag the duplicate away from the original text. Turn it into a whole part. Then select both the whole type text and the card and center them relative to each other. Now group that whole type text with the card and that will cut the text out of it. Now you won't see this from the top, but if you look underneath, you'll see that the text has been cut out and also that it's facing the correct direction. Neat, huh? Okay, so now we have the two models which will become our two color card. So select just the text model and export it to an STL file. Then select just the card model and export it to an STL file. So now that we've got the two models exported, we need to import them into the slicer. And I use Prusa Slicer, but if you use Cura or some other slicer, that's cool too. The concepts should work regardless of the slicing software. I'm going to take the text model STL file and drag it into the plater in Prusa Slicer. Most slicers will automatically center the model on the build plate, and that's what we want. Remember, in Tinkercad, we made sure that the text was centered on the card before we cut the text out of it. So later, when we slice the card model, it'll be in the correct place if it's centered. Now let's talk for a moment about what usually happens when you start printing a file. Typically, your slicer included some G-code to do a priming line after the nozzle and bed have heated up. The priming line is that little line that gets printed along the edge of the build plate, and its purpose is to help ensure that filament is flowing before the first layer actually starts printing. Now also, your slicer may print a skirt around the model, and again, this is a feature that helps ensure the nozzle is extruding filament. Now, because the priming line is usually set up in the starting G-code, you'd have to edit your printer's settings to remove it. Now, I don't want to go to all that trouble when we can just peel the priming line off the bed in between the two prints. So, the priming line stays. The skirt, well, we don't strictly need that since it happens immediately after the priming line. It could get in the way between prints. But the skirt is an easy feature to turn on or off. And here's how to do it in Prusa Slicer. In the Print Settings tab, click the Skirt and Brim category, and then change the number of loops for the skirt to zero. Other slicers should have a similarly named setting somewhere, just look for the word skirt. But if you find that you can't turn the skirt off in your slicer, that's okay too. In between printing the text and printing the card, you can simply remove the skirt from the print bed. Okay, so we've got the skirt turned off. So we can pick the filament that we want, slice the model, and then save the G-code file. Let's save it as card text. So now we'll clear this model out of the slicer and drag in the card. And remember, where the text is cut out, we've got a void in that first layer, and your slicer might want to put supports there, so you need to make sure that you don't have supports turned on when you slice the card. Now, before we slice this file, there is one more thing that I want to do. 
there is a setting called XY Size Compensation, and it's mostly used to adjust the size of parts when one part is supposed to fit inside another. Sometimes the space that a part is supposed to fit into is just too tight, so this feature can help. It grows or shrinks the model evenly in the X and Y dimensions, depending on whether you use a positive or negative value. So I want to make sure that when the card prints around the text that's already been printed, the nozzle isn't getting too close to the text. So here's where the feature lives. Inside the Print Settings tab, click the Advanced category, and down near the bottom, there's the feature, XY Size Compensation. I want to adjust it just a little bit. Let's set it to negative 0.1. In case you're wondering, I got that value by trying a few different ones and seeing how they looked. Okay, so with that one extra change made, let's go back to the plater, pick the filament that we want, and slice the file. Then we'll look at its preview to make sure that the area where the text should be is clear. So down here on the first layer, it's looking the way we expect, so let's save this G-code file as card back. And finally, it's time to print the files. Now, usually I like to send the files to the printer using OctaPrint, but this time I plugged the printer's micro SD card into the computer and saved the files there. I figured I'm going to have to be over at the printer anyway to change filament and remove the priming line between prints. Okay, so here we go. The color scheme that I've chosen for this is CC3D Antique Gold Silk PLA for the text and some generic white PLA for the card back, and I think that would look really cool. I've got the silk gold PLA loaded up, so let's start printing the text. Okay, now that the text is done, I've unloaded the gold filament and loaded up the white. And I pushed the white filament through by hand until it was coming out clean, so when you change colors, make sure you do that too. So, let's start printing the card back. Alright, that's done, and it's cooled down, so let's take it off the printer and see what we got. I love my Wham Bam Magnetic Flex Plates. They make getting things off the printer super easy. Ah, cool. That turned out exactly like I wanted. Check out how the light catches that gold silk filament. That's so cool. And the thing is smooth both front and back. And at a millimeter thick, it's about the same thickness as a credit card. And I am so glad that turned out like it did. Now I've got a project I can use that on. A friend of mine needs a replacement trailer hitch cover for his truck. He had this one that looks like it's made out of cast aluminum, but he backed into something and broke the corner off. Now I'm working on designing and printing a replacement for this, but if I wanted to do a layer swap color change to get the University of Texas logo in a different color, I'd have to print it with the logo facing up and that would use a ton of support material to support all the rest of this when it prints. But being able to print this face down with the logo and the background in different colors on the same layer, it will really speed up the printing process and make for a better looking final product. <laughs> well, that about does it for this one. Thanks for making it all the way to the end and thanks so much for all the likes, comments, and shares. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you don't miss out on any cool 3D printing stuff. If you liked this episode, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. But either way, please share your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content I'm producing and you want to help out, check out the description for ways you can do that. Shopping using the links that I've got there really helps no matter what you're buying. And heck, even just subscribing is a great way to support the channel and help keep me making these videos for you. 
Well, since I've got a project that I want to use this technique on, I'm going to go work on that. You go print something cool, and I'll see you next time.